For most internet fraudsters, the goal is to live in a sheltered and quiet life, far away from the watchful gaze of law enforcement agencies. But Ramon Abbas, otherwise known as Hush Puppy, was a different breed. The popular Nigerian trickster positioned himself as an internet sensation, brazenly flaunting all the proceeds of his scams to over 3 million followers on social media, including undercover FBI agents who would eventually plot his downfall. Join us as we reveal the inside story of how the FBI solved an intricate web of multi-billion dollar scams to arrest one of the world's most lethal internet fraudsters. From the shanty cribs in Bariga, Lagos, to the sprawling streets of Maitama in Abuja, and perhaps everywhere else in the world's most populous nation, Nigeria, the name Hush Puppy was synonymous with success. Virtually every young kid hoped to become like him someday. He lived the life of the party all year long, and you didn't have to go far to see the signs. In fact, if you were among his legion of nearly 4 million combined followers on Instagram and Snapchat, it would have been easier to miss your wedding anniversary than to miss one of Hush Puppy's new acquisitions. Of course, many were concerned about the source of his seemingly endless wealth, but every time he was asked, he hid under the guise of doing real estate and covered up with some pretty good motivational lines. During a random tour of his penthouse in Dubai, Hush Puppy gave one of his gospel-like speeches, saying, My heart is pure, I sleep good at night. When something good happens to me, I believe it's because I did something right, not because someone promised me money that I did not work for, or money that I don't deserve. Turns out his heart is actually not pure, and he's been spending money he didn't work for all this while. By his own admission, Hush Puppy grew up in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Lagos, Nigeria. His father was a cabman, and his mother was a mere street trader who sold bread. Clearly, he wasn't accustomed to wealth or luxury growing up, but deep down in his heart, he wanted these things so badly and was prepared to go to any length to get them. As the new millennium dawned on the world, cyber cafes were on the uprise in Nigeria, attracting curious youths from across all neighborhoods. And this coincided with a significant increase in the cybercrime rate in Nigeria. Since most of the crimes were carried out through email accounts, the protagonists were nicknamed Yahoo Boys. If internet fraud was a discipline of study, Hush Puppy would be that super brilliant kid who consistently finished top of the class. But with the Nigerian security forces intensifying their efforts against cyber crimes, Hush Puppy left for Malaysia in 2014, where he could operate under the radar and enjoy better internet infrastructure. It was in Malaysia that Hush Puppy evolved to become a public figure. He traveled the world in premium luxury, buying expensive jewelry, clothes, and cars. Literally, every post on social media was accompanied by a hashtag from one of the luxury brands he patronizes. In recognition of his constant patronage, brands like Louis Vuitton, Fendi, and Versace invited him to exclusive events as a VIP guest. They sent him customized cakes on his birthdays and publicly acknowledged him as one of their best customers. Back home in Nigeria, he was the talk of the town and the number one role model for upcoming Yahoo boys. When he wasn't flaunting his illicit wealth on social media, Hush Puppy was seen attending luxury parties and hanging out with top celebrities like Davido, Wizkid, and even former Chelsea striker Tammy Abraham. Life was really sweet. He lived in a penthouse, wore the best clothes, and drove the most expensive cars. But for a fraudster who doesn't know how hard it is for a penny to come by, it could be better. So Abbas linked up with another notorious Nigerian scammer, Ismailia Mustafa popularly called Mumfa. Mumfa lived in Dubai, which unsurprisingly became Hush Puppy's next destination. And then he became a specialist in business email compromise schemes. BECs are the pinnacle of internet fraud. They account for around $43 billion, or over 40% of the entire funds stolen through scams. Basically, a BEC scam would see hackers infiltrate the inner sanctum of corporate email addresses, patiently biding their time like cunning predators. With razor-sharp precision, they lie in wait sometimes for weeks, months, or even years, their eyes fixed on the grand prize, the arrival of a sizable invoice. With calculated finesse, they send the fake invoice to the unsuspecting victim, coaxing them to direct the funds to a new, treacherous destination. And if the victim falls for it, their hard-earned wealth vanishes like whispers in the wind. Like one time in 2019 when a New York law firm needed to pay a client $922,000 to refinance a real estate project. Unfortunately for them, an email requesting for confirmation of where the money would be sent was intercepted by the notorious Hush Puppy. He immediately replied with a fax demanding that the money be sent to another account. 
A representative of the law firm rang the number on the fax just to be sure that the new request was legitimate. But as always, Hush Puppy was one step ahead. He had made arrangements for a fake agent to answer the call and say all the right things that the law firm worker would like to hear. And that's how Hush Puppy made away with nearly $1 million. Of course, scams of this magnitude are beyond what a single man can pull off, and Hush Puppy was definitely not alone. Aside from his countryman, Mofa, Hush Puppy also worked with a Canadian money launderer named Galeb Alumeri. Both men collaborated on a daring project to steal 13 million euros from the Bank of Valletta in Malta, and they almost succeeded. But they couldn't redistribute to other accounts quickly, and this gave the bank enough time to recover the loot. Unperturbed by the disappointment of losing $13 million that he never worked for, Abbas was back on Instagram celebrating Valentine's Day just 24 hours later. He posted an image of himself fully knitted in Fendi and leaning on a $160,000 Bentley Bentayga with the caption, the best way to celebrate the season of love. Expectedly, Hush Puppy's wealth also bought him the respect of corrupt law enforcement agents particularly in Nigeria. During one of his numerous fraud schemes, he teamed up with a Nigerian-based scammer named Chibuzo. Chibuzo's role was to create fake Wells Fargo websites and hotline, and he did it to perfection. But when he realized how much Hush Puppy would earn from the scheme, he demanded a larger share of the criminal cake. When Hush Puppy rebuffed this request, Chibuzo contacted the victim and revealed the truth. As expected, Hush Puppy was left furious by this new development. So he reached out to Abba Kiari, a deputy commissioner of the Nigerian police force, and requested for Chibuzu's arrest. The corrupt super cop gladly obliged Hush Puppy's request, but little did he know that both he and Hush Puppy would be subjected to the same treatments in a few months' time. Unlike famous drug lords and other scammers in history, Hush Puppy paid very little attention to laundering his illicit cash. On the contrary, he was more happy to flaunt it on social media and this naturally caught the attention of the FBI. After getting Hush Puppy's correct date of birth from the birthday cake that Gucci gifted him, secret agents were able to track his visa application details and other information that confirmed his illegal activities. As always, the FBI did a good job with the investigation. They quickly established his connection between Hush Puppy, Alumeri, and Mumfa, and placed all three scammers under surveillance. Alumeri was apprehended first by the FBI at an airport. Around 24 hours, Mumfa was nabbed by the EFCC at an airport in Nigeria. At this point, it was clear that Hush Puppy's cover was blown open. The FBI had gathered enough evidence against him from the chats on Alumeri's phone, and it was only a matter of time before they reined in on him. But there was only one problem. Hush Puppy was based in Dubai, which is outside the jurisdiction of the FBI. So they arranged with the SWAT team in Dubai to raid his mansion on June 8, 2020. During the operation tagged Fox Hunt 2, security operatives arrested Hush Puppy and seized several valuables. This included 47 phones, 21 laptops, $40 million cash, luxury cars worth over $7 million, and private information of 2 million potential victims. Within a few hours, Hush Puppy's fate took a seismic shift as he was extradited to the United States, where the weight of his cybercrimes totaling a staggering $24 million bore down upon him. He was ordered to pay $1.7 million in restitution and sentenced to 11 years imprisonment. And that's how the reign of Hush Puppy, once a symbol of audacious excess, came to an end.